father's kingdom It was there for me You took, you took me in And you washed away my sins You washed away my sins You ready? You're listening to The Real Pineapple Podcast Network. Hey, good evening, ladies, gentlemen, ladies, and gays. This is The Real Pineapple. This is your, there we go. Uh, this is your humble host, Hunter, here. I hope you're safe. I hope you're well. Um, happy Thursday. Happy Thursday, everyone. Uh, we're almost at the weekend. Thank God. Um, yeah, so real quick. Um, um, oh, my gosh. I, I totally lost my train of thought. God, I'm I'm, I'm not even that tired. I, I shouldn't have, I should know that better. But not. Um, So I'm going to just do a quick review. For red, uh, for red one, I uh, went ahead and saw that earlier. Um, I didn't. Uh, I don't actually have anything really. The soapbox. I feel like I've ranted about the election. Um, don't worry, there will be, <laughs> there will be more. I'm sure to say. Um, but I mean, I've talked about the election. Um, working on the best. Oh yeah, so that is actually set my camera ring up. So the best, uh, best and worst of. Uh, list i can't i can't talk about that um so i'm gonna start really hunkering down here over the next uh six seven weeks um i'm gonna be watching the most stuff uh that i you know this is it's this time of the year this is the time of year i uh, barricade myself in the office and my in and, and uh try to watch as much oscar stuff as humanly possible so uh, yeah, I'll be doing that again per usual this year. But as far as the um, when the reviews will be up or when uh, my best of worst of, l- I'm shooting for mid January. Um, that's what I'm shooting for. We will see if that happens. It might be more towards the end of the month uh, of January. Um, but uh, on the low end or on the late end, I'd like to shoot for that maybe that February 1st. I don't like to do both lists typically in the same day, but doing that on a Saturday, I might be coerced into doing that. So uh, we're looking at probably February 1st on the late end. Uh, but uh, yeah, so just 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 so you're aware. Um, if you follow me on Letterboxd, uh, you can actually kind of see where I'm at right now currently for my with my best worst stuff. So um you can follow me over there at uh, uh, Black Shazam. So if uh, if uh, you need a re- another reason to go ahead and follow me on there, so um, all right, all right. So I've got a review for Red One, which is directed by uh, D- uh, Jake Casden, uh, uh, who uh, you know from directing. Um, wait, was that him? Wait a minute, I thought that was. Oh no, Apatow only produced it. That's right. So here's what's so interesting is this dude's filmography. Uh, he did walk hard. That alone kind of gives him cachet to do whatever the fuck he wants. Uh, but he did he wrote uh he wrote, directed, and produced Walk Hard. Um, I keep I was like, no, that's Apatow. No, Apatow was only a producer on that. So he so he does walk hard. Uh, he does Bad Teacher, which, eh, Bad Teacher is fine, um, in 2011. He does Sex Tape. I fucking hate Sex Tape. That's uh, the Catherine, uh, uh, Cameron Diaz, uh, Jason Siegel one. That's a dog shit movie. Um, that's actually one of the earliest reviews we did on the podcast, uh, on the show, was our Sex Tape review. So you can actually check that out. But, uh. But yeah, sex tape is shit. That's a terrible fucking movie. Um, and then, but then he's he's directed um, 
uh, he's directed the last two, so it looks like he didn't do the third one. But um, he directed Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle, and Jumanji, The Next Level. Um, two very successful films for Dwayne Johnson. Um, and then he was an executive producer on uh, Prom Pact, which I haven't seen, but apparently uh, people uh, seem to like it. So, I mean, that's that's something. But, uh, yeah, so going into this, let's just call it what it is. I, I was not overly excited about going into this. As a matter of fact, I was I was downright looking forward to about anything else but this. Um, I'm more excited for Wicked next next week and Glad to Hear, too. I'm so hyped for those. This, I, I just, I win this with a bad attitude, but... Let's call it what it is. Uh, Dwayne Johnson has kind of given you a reason to be a uh, suspect at this point. Um, so let, let's just talk about Dwayne Johnson a little bit. So, you know, back in what was it, 20? Oh, god, when, when 2022, god, it feels like forever ago, but back in 2022, he did Black Adam and he did DC League of Super Pets. He voiced uh, Crypto, Crypto the Super Dog. Um, that was Dwayne Johnson's attempt to go ahead and take over DC Comics. Like, that's what it was, and take over the film division. That was his goal. And uh, that did not work out very well because he is now back in WWE, which I guarantee you he fucking wouldn't be if Black Adam was a success that he thought it was going to be. Um, but then after that, he goes ahead and he does... Um, uh, actually, no, that was before. Never mind. So, Dwayne Johnson's been on a very, like, weird, like, path movie-wise. So, let's just let's just go back to 2016. And I go back to 2016 for a reason, so, so stick with me. So, okay, 2016, you get Central Intelligence. Eh, does well, does decently well, though. Does Moana. That's, that's a, that's a smash, a hit. I mean, we're getting a sequel in, like, a week uh does fate of the furious you know does well not 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 great but does well does baywatch baywatch does not do well uh he does jumanji welcome to the jungle in 2017 uh same year as baywatch that does well he does rampage in 2018 that does not do well he does skyscraper in 2018 that does not do well he does fighting for my family which not a huge financial success but it's a smaller indie film it makes money florence Pugh uh gets critical claim for that role um so yeah it, that that does well for him uh, he's an executive producer on that um shazam he's an executive producer on that doesn't do well commercially but dc does go ahead and green light a sequel which does worse um and doesn't have the critical claim that this one did so i would say that's a win does Hobbs and Shaw doesn't not doesn't do Game Busters, but does well. Uh, Jumanji Next Level huge smash does well with critics does well uh, commercially. Then you get Jungle Cruise that was a pandemic film didn't do great, but people I mean audience scores well is good on it. So I mean I'll kind of give him a little bit of a pass on that. But then he does Red Notice. Red Notice is where. That's one of the most expensive films. I think it might be, it still might be the most expensive film that Netflix has produced. And that movie is just, it's, it's fucking garbage. It's such a bad fucking movie. That's 2021. And then we get to League of Super Pets. Then we get Black Adam. So Dwayne Johnson, he's been on the skids here. Like really, I would say, even if you go back to like 2014, um, he does Hercules in 2014. Then he does Furious 7. Then he does San Andreas. Like, like those are two, that's two, that's two flops uh sandwiched in between the middle of a film that does great. So I'm just saying, I think this Dwayne Johnson, like just throw him in an action movie and you're guaranteed to make 500 million. I think those days are over. I, I mean, I think those days have been over, and I've been saying that. I've been saying that I think that he is not the box office draw that um that he feels like that he feels like he was um it, it's kind of interesting some kind of similar happened with will smith because i really feel like will smith thought he was bigger than he was like still doing the men in black films and all that and then he really kind of had to accept the fact that 
nah, dude, that's not you anymore. And and I think this movie is really going to kind of be that nail that's going to hammer home the fact that, dude, you're just not that guy anymore. And I know he wants to be. I know Dwayne Johnson would love to be. Like, let's call it what it is. Um, I think he is very Vince McMahon in this way, in the sense of if Dwayne Johnson could just be making movies right now, he would just be making movies right now. Like he's back in wrestling because that's his only real option right now to be adored by people and to make money is to go back to WWE. Like I, 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 I'm not going to go on a whole thing, but I, I won't lie. The whole quote, final boss nickname fucking pisses me off. The man hasn't had a one-on-one wrestling match in almost a decade and you're the final boss fuck out of here with that <laughs> like seriously the final boss no fuck, fuck you um so i i don't i don't love that but going into this i will say i went all right maybe if we can get some of that dwayne johnson charm because the the, dude, the fucker can still be charming i just think he comes across like such a douche it's hard to like buy into it but what i will give this movie credit for and because again fair is fair i think this is a movie that if you had someone like anita costa someone like a lord of miller someone like a jordan peele someone that would be interested in world building i actually think you could have a good movie here i i, I honestly believe that um the writer of this was a screenwriter and this was chris morgan uh chris morgan he uh so i mean he also wrote this oh he wrote shazam fury the god oh man okay so as i'm looking through here um so he was a producer on the mummy the tom cruise one ick not a great start uh he was a screenwriter and producer on hobson shaw i i I like hobson shaw it's stupid but i like it um but then he was a uh, screenwriter shazam fury of the gods which everyone i've talked to who's just been very disappointed with that um, he was a producer on a Fast and, Fur- uh, Fast and Furious Spy Racers, which is actually a really good show. Um, so I mean, yeah, not not the best screenwriting credits uh, to your name, but it feels like this guy is very much a I just need to cover my bases sort of guy. He may not even be that good of a screenwriter to be to be quite frank, because there are some things in here that are introduced that I went okay that's an interesting concept it's kind of like that charlie's angels movie in the sense of uh this movie introduces like there's like there's this whole concept to bring up of um they're basically able to go through uh, different toy stores kind of like as like uh like hubs uh for when they go ahead and they're in uh like in christmas season to go ahead and get around quicker and i actually was like that's kind of clever actually that that's an interesting notion and then there's this whole thing where there are people in law enforcement who know who santa is and like know that santa exists so that would actually be kind of an interesting thing to be like okay how does santa work with law enforcement in the sense of like like how high up do you have to be in order to know that you know that santa fucking exists i there are a couple things like that that i'll sit in there going man there, there, like there's something here but the problem is this guy just doesn't fucking care about shit in this movie. This movie feels like um this movie feels ironically enough like a mummy film. But I'm not talking about like the mummy or the mummy returns. I'm talking about this feels like the mummy tomb of the dragon emperor. Like it feels like they went, oh, what what new visual effects package came out? Oh, we can do uh we can do like the we can do like killer abominable <laughs> Killer snowman? Sure. Why not? Let's go ahead and do that. So they 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 throw that in. Um Nick Kroll gets possessed in this movie in a sequence that is so unnecessary. <laughs> like there, there is just such another way to do that. I was like, all right, cool. We're 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 doing this shit. Um I I don't even know where to start with this. So, okay. So, J.K. Simmons, he, of course, plays Santa. And I, it's so funny because I was thinking back on, um, on like Christmas movies because 
per usual, I'm going to do a 12 Days of Christmas uh, countdown, uh, uh, review countdown. Still figuring out the list, but I will be doing some some holiday uh, slash Christmas reviews. But I um, I was thinking back to a Violet Night and how much that movie kicks so much ass and how awesome David Harbour is as Santa and how they actually do a really good job of getting you, giving you some like mythology about Santa. And like, I really love that fucking movie. And as I'm sitting here and watching this, I went, man, if you guys hadn't stopped at the outline, if, if someone really actually fucking cared about, and I, and I hate to even say it like this, but if someone wanted to make this a franchise, to like lay some groundwork, maybe that's how you have to go ahead and just pitch shit now. Like, I hate to be that cynical, but it's starting to kind of make me wonder, like, is that what we have to do? Do we have to say that, oh, yeah, you're guaranteed another movie for people actually fucking care and put some effort in? Because shit in this movie just happens be- just because. Um, Dwayne Johnson's character, um, um, uh, what's what's the fucker's name? Um Clint, something like that. Callum, there. I'll start with a C. Whatever. Um, but he has this uh, bracelet. He basically has the uh, the pim tech. Basically, he has this gauntlet that can go ahead and like make things bigger or make things smaller. And I will say they actually use that to shockingly good effect. Of course, that's the end. It's at the very end of the fucking movie. But they go ahead and they have uh, they show how Santa actually uses the technology to like shrink to go ahead and get inside chimneys and then and like size back up once he's back in, once he's in like the main part of the house and how he actually is able to do that with like the stockings and stuff like that and i went this is fucking clever like where the fuck was this for the other 90 percent of the film and i think that's what just made me so angry is because i look i went in this i had a tall margarita because i was like i am not watching this sober and then i had a tall i, I got a tall 805 <laughs> uh at the theater, I was just like, all right, I, I, I can do this. And I'm not going to lie, y'all. As I'm sitting there, I'm like, I'm not hating this. For like the first 15 minutes, I wasn't hating it. But there's just this point where Chris Evans goes ahead and joins the party. Uh, he plays Jack O'Malley, who is who is a guy who acts things. Uh, <laughs> they don't really super... He, He's a hacker who sells shit to the highest bidder. bidder. That that's that's essentially what he is or who he is. So I I you know I, sure, but he has the whole subplot of oh he's a shitty person, so he's on the naughty list. He's like a level four naughty list lister, which they kind of throw out that whole that whole concept that there are levels to naughty list, and then they kind of just like don't follow up on it. Which again, something else that was interesting. That could have used more explanation. Um, but Chris Evans and Dwayne Johnson, I just don't think they have chemistry. And it's so like you think you think about Evans and like Anthony Mackie, or you think back to like Evans and like Rob Dunn Jr. or Evans and fucking Sebastian Stan. Like we've seen Evans have chemistry. Uh fuck Evans and a uh, fucking I- uh, Idris in in uh the the losers. Like they have they have chemistry in that, like. We've seen Evans have chemistry with his co-stars, and I just don't think there's any chemistry between him and Johnson here. Um, It's it's funny. I was uh, I brought up Rush Hour uh, Rush Hour the other day, and you know, obviously elements of those films have not aged great. But one thing that just constantly is great in those movies, even in the third one, where it is definitely a step down, um, step and a half, probably. But the second film is. Can and Tucker's chemistry, it's still there, even when the script isn't. And as I'm watching this, I just went, I'm not getting this like fun buddy pop dynamic, which you're clearly going for. Um, it feels like they're going for Lethal Weapon, and yeah, it, it's just it's not the case here. I I thought I I actually have to kind of retract something I said about Red Notice. I thought that Dwayne Johnson and uh Ryan Reynolds didn't have chemistry. I think the chemistry's work personally. Um, yeah, it's just it's it's rough. And then you get to uh, the villain of the film, uh, 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 Grilla, who's played by uh, Kiernan uh, Shimka, 
who you know from Charling Adventures of Sabrina and Totally Killer. Um, I'm such a fan of hers, and like I I hope she gets to play a villain again because like there's something there. But the problem is her motivations are so thinly defined. Like she's really just there to kind of be there, and and she really doesn't get any sequences with the villain, like like with the heroes. It's it's really weird how much of an afterthought the main threat of this movie is. And you get someone who's proven to be a great actor, and yet this is what you do with them. It, it, it's really quite frustrating. Um, when I think about something like this too, this budget's $250 million. I cannot tell you there isn't an action sequence that I was like, Oh man, like let's go. Um, one of the things that's a very dumb decision about this, and I get why this is, but hear me out. So much of this happens at night, uh, including when Santa is kidnapped. And all sitting there thinking the whole time is, okay, you're at the fucking North Pole. Have some lights. Light the North Pole up. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, why aren't there Christmas lights everywhere? There should be. It's fucking Christmas time. It's just, it, uh, <laughs> there's just stuff like that. That I just kept going, come on, movie. I'm like, like, give me, like, give me something. Um, yeah, the, the, there is straight up, and I, I know I keep making the Marvel comparison, but there is straight up a point where a one of those about those snowmen, those evil snowmen, gets the staff that straight up looks like the the Loki spear um, that it, that it has the uh, tesseract in it, and he and and the snowman literally touches someone and they freeze, and I just went like really, really now, like. I, like, uh, come on! I know people steal from each other, but goddamn, do you have to make it so obvious? Um, as I'll say, I, I know I mentioned it kind of in passing, but the beginning part of this movie, the first like ten minutes, where it's mostly J.K. Simmons, I actually liked it. I went, oh, the uh, J.K. Simmons. I was trying to find the, I was trying to find the line. Uh, bu- 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 bu. Okay, here we go. Um, so. Dwayne Johnson actually has this whole thing about wanting to quit. And he's just like, I'm over this job. I'm over, uh, you know, he talks about how, you know, I love the kids. It's the adults who make this shit, you know, miserable each year. Um, you know, uh, people act like uh, there are more people now on the naughty list now than have uh, than are on the, like, the, the good list. And, like, they don't even care. And... And uh, and so Santa just goes like, it's not our job to change people. It's our job to give them something to believe in. Blow all that pessimism is the optimism they felt as kids. And I was like, wow. I was like, what? Where, like, where the fuck did that come from? I was, sh- I was so shocked. It like woke me up. I was like, where the fuck? Like, okay. But. But then the movie just it's it's never even remotely that interesting ever again. And again, this is like the first 10 minutes. So I like I'm not even like I'm mad because this is 250 fucking million dollars. Like, you know, I have indie directors, like I've been interviewing people more so than ever before on the show. I guarantee you, um, oh my god, could you imagine giving fucking um could you imagine giving Jennifer Levinson fucking two hundred million dollars? Oh my God, she would direct. She would direct something awesome with that. Could you imagine giving? God, yeah. Could you imagine fucking giving Mia DaCosta? Um, like give her that. Like I know the Marvels like two hundred million. Shut up. But like, let her do a project like that inspires her. Um, we just had you know we just had Clayne Crawford back on. We just had. Uh, you know, Sarah Friedman on. Um, oh my god, they would crush a project with just 20 million, let alone fucking 200 million. So when I see a movie like this where it's so expensive and it feels like no one fucking cared, it's like, what do you want me to say? Like, I'm not giving you a pass for that. Like, no, nah. like it, it, it's it's made even worse too by the fact that Dwayne Johnson just did this with uh with Red Notice. Like I I kept confusing this with Red Nose. I kept calling this Red Nose. I'm like, no, it's Red One, Red One. Like I had kind of drill that in my head. Um, 
I, I, oh man, this movie really upsets me. Um, even though I wasn't like pissed off, pissed off, but I was sitting there going like, this is shit. Like it's, it's, it's in that, even something like Madam Web, like I expect Sony to fuck up, but I do like, I could at least go with Madam Web. Hey, there is like a girl power element to this that might make this fun to watch like at a sleepover, maybe like to just like talk shit about it, but kind of have fun with like, you know, with your girls, maybe, maybe that, you know, it fills that ilk for, for someone. There's no goddamn reason to watch this. My friend, uh, my friend Ambrosia, shout out to her. She was like, oh, like, should I watch it? And I was like, on streaming if you have to but i mean i i use a free credit for this and i was like man if i had paid for this and maybe that's part of why why i'm not so mad is i didn't pay to actually watch it you know i paid for my food or whatever but uh, yeah y'all this isn't i'm not even mad enough to give this a go fuck yourself so i mean i'll give it an f but man it's just when I got to the end of this, I was like, I just want this to be over. That That's what I kept thinking. I was like, is this done? I'm so tired. Like, I do not care. And Lucy Liu, my God, that woman is, is so goddamn fine and so goddamn talented. And even in this, she is trying harder than she has any fucking right to be. And... I'm frustrated watching her because I'm like, can we get her a vehicle? Can we get her an action franchise? Can we get her into the MC? Like, can we do something with Lucy Liu? She's fucking amazing and she deserves more than she gets. And like, it's, it's so frustrating. Like, I don't know. So I just, uh, anyways, so this is an F like, don't don't watch this. There's just there's just nothing for you here. Like at the end of the like even for a Christmas movie, it's like oh should I watch for that? No, no. Like watch Violent Night. Violent Night is so much better than this. And that's the other issue I have too. It's like there's no reason for me to recommend this because Violent Night exists. Like why would I recommend you know something shittier to you? So yeah, don't don't watch this. And this is on track apparently to make around 35 million and the 250 million apparently isn't including even the marketing budget. So uh yeah, this is not gonna this isn't gonna do great. Um yeah, this is probably never flop for Dwayne Johnson. So uh yeah, but uh, F F for me <laughs> uh for red one. But uh yeah, I'm gonna get out of here as far as the rest of the week. Um I might stream tomorrow. I, uh, you know, maybe I will stream tomorrow. I'll think about it. Oh, yeah, I am going to go ahead and do a breakdown of the uh, Captain America uh, in the Thunderbolts trailer. So, actually, maybe I'll maybe I'll do that. Shit, maybe I'll do that tomorrow. Maybe I'll do a trailer breakdown, and then I'll do, uh, re- uh, I'll stream some Batman or something. But I'll uh, I'll update the, the channel so y'all know. But... Uh, as far as what I've got coming up, I've got next week, I've got a review for Gladiator and Gladiator 2. I'm excited to go ahead and bring that to y'all. Um, I'm real excited to go ahead and see that. Um, and then uh, what else? I'm going to be streaming. I will be streaming Batman at uh, the Telltale series for sure next week. I'm um, going to get back to my AW reviews next week. So I'll have a review for uh, AW Dynamite next Thursday. Um as far as what's on the channel right now, um, I've got a lot on the channel right now, y'all. So there's quite a bit of uh, for y'all to catch up on. So actually, can I? Uh, can I present? Uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Share screen window. Uh, yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. So, um, yeah, recently I uh, uh, reviewed this uh, fun thriller called The Stoic. I did an interview with the uh, writer-director, John Eckersley. Uh, That is up on the the channels right now, as well as the video uh, interview uh, as well. I just interviewed, um, did this, uh, read this film called Or Something, this cool indie flick. Did an interview with the director of it and the producer, Dan Blackwell, and Jeffrey Scott, uh, Scotty Schroeder, uh, 
that was a really fun interview. So that's up on the channel right now, as well as a video interview on YouTube. I did a uh, interview uh, with uh, Dan uh, Daniel Partland, who did uh, the documentary Unfit about Donald Trump, and did um, the sequel called Untruth: The Psychology of Trumpism. Uh, that reviews up on the channel right now, um, as well as an interview with him. Uh, he gave me an hour of his time, and, and the interview was really thought provoking and a lot. Um, but um, I, I know a lot of us don't want to hear about Trump right now, but um, I do think that that's an interview that's well worth your time. So I would definitely recommend y'all check that out. Um, I did an interview um, with um, SC King, uh, this really amazing director. They were a blast to have on as well as actress, Danielle Joy Healy, uh, we talked about their film, Our Dad, Danielle, um, which is this really awesome documentary about uh, Danielle uh, coming out as a trans woman um, just before, uh, just a couple of years before she turned 60 and about her journey. And they gave me like 30 minutes of their time. They were so, they were so fucking cool, so fucking sweet to talk to. So definitely check out that review as well. And then I did a interview uh, for this uh, film called Chaperone. Uh, interviewed the director uh, Zoe Eisenberg. Um, think uh, when you think about Chaperone, think about May December, but I would say even a little darker. Um, it's a great flick. Um, so my review for that is up on the channel, um, and then the my uh, video interview with Zoe is up on the YouTube uh, channel as well. Uh, but a hell of a movie. That's that's gonna be one of those movies that people watch um next month as they start to wrap up their best stuff and, and go like oh shit like sh check out chaperone y'all like check that movie out um and then uh and then i did a uh interview for uh with writer actress director uh she's kind of talented uh sarah friedman we talked about her feature uh debut heightened which there is a review up for here as well uh, video interviews up on the channel on the YouTube channel, and then uh, lastly, I, as I mentioned earlier, I did a uh, interview with uh, Summer Shelton, uh, who wrote, uh, starred in, and directed this uh, her feature debut uh, debut called You and I, and a friend of the show, Clayne Crawford, uh, co stars in that film, so they they were on the interview as well. Um, got to talk to them for about 20 minutes. So definitely check out that uh, interview and then uh, go ahead and check out the video. Uh, that's up on YouTube as well, as well as my uh, actual interview uh, or uh, review for you and I. So lots of stuff, lots of stuff that's uh, up on the channel right now. Um, as far as what's coming up, I mentioned Dead uh, um, uh, Gladiator and Gladiator 2 reviews will be up next week. I will have my review for... Uh, Deadpool and Wolverine on Saturday. So my review will be up for that. And uh, yeah, I will end up streaming um, at the latest on Sunday, but I'm, I, I do want to break down the, that new Thunderbolts trailer and then the uh, uh, the Captain America trailer. Um, so um, yeah, I will uh, I will bring both of those uh, uh, break both those down for y'all. But Everyone, thank you so much for listening. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe. Take care of each other. Give someone a hug. Give someone a compliment. Could all use some more positivity. Um, I hope you're all staying safe. Um, I know it's getting colder. So, yeah, please bundle up. Uh, get your flu shot. Get your COVID shot. Um, bundle up. Bundle up. Bundle up. Um, but never forget, as always, to keep it real. Thank you so much for tuning in, y'all. And I'll talk to you soon. Peace.